Hello, Dr. Danger Mouse up here, and recently I decided to buy a glass mug for my tea. And it got me wondering whether they're actually better than ceramic, so I decided to review it and do some tests, which probably means I need to get more of a life. Now, just to give you a bit of background and some science, um, this mug holds about 350 millilitres, which is about 12 ounces, and it's made from what's called borosilicate, which is a mixture of silica and boron trioxide. Now the thing about um, borosilicate is it's got what's called a low coefficient of thermal expansion and that means it's resistant to thermal shock. Now thermal shock is for example if you fill that with boiling water and then put it in a cold sink or something. Um, normally most glass would crack but this doesn't. So you can take it up to about 165 degrees centigrade uh, which is 300 Fahrenheit, before it will start re um, reacting to thermal shock. Now, it's more durable than glass. Um, it's a lot harder, but um, people do complain that it does break when they wash it. Um, that's because the walls are quite thin. So even though it is stronger than glass, um, you have to be careful when you do wash it. Now, another thing people do is mistake it for plastic. It's not. As you bang on it with this teaspoon, you can quite hit, quite clearly hear it's glass. Um, other interesting things, this one is microwave and dishwasher proof. And psychologically, um, apparently, drinks taste sweeter in transparent mugs than they do in ceramic. Um, for the same reason, if you get a brown mug and put coffee in it, apparently the coffee tastes stronger. So a similar kind of principle. Um, now, as you can see, I don't know if you can see there, this mug is double walled. Do you see here? There's a gap in between the inner and the outer. Now, it works like double glazing, um, but it traps air in, and this is supposed to insulate your drink and keep it warmer. Um, I'm not sure about that, which is why I'm going to do this experiment. Um, but another reason people buy it, I didn't buy it for this, um, is that because it's smooth on the inside, the tannins don't bind to the surface and it actually retains the flavour of the tea better or coffee. And finally, it is recyclable, so it's better for the environment. These, you can't recycle these, they just get smashed up and put into a skip somewhere. So, without further ado, let's start the experiment. Now, what I'm going to need is... a fixed amount of boiling water. Now I've got two jugs here, because if I use one jug and put boiling water in, and then fill it with the second amount of boiling water, it's already going to be warmed, so that's going to distort the results somewhat. So, boiling water. Secondly, I'm going to need one of these, um, which is one of my gadgets. It is a probe thermometer. It's not like the ones you use to measure your temperature, because they only go up to about 40 degrees. Um, this one will measure way beyond 100 degrees centigrade, so we're going to use that. Okay. What we're going to do is try and control the experiment, is put 300 millilitres into both the ceramic cup and the borosilicate cup. So here is a boiled kettle. Um, what I've done is I've used two separate jugs. Now primarily, the reason behind this is because if I use one jug, the jug will be warmed by the previous contents of the mug. So there we go, 300, 300. So first of all, I'm going to fill the ceramic. There we go. And now I'm going to fill the borosilicate. should be really interesting. I love stuff like this. Honestly, I could entertain myself all day. So, we've put the water in, and now what we need to do is start the timer and take initial readings to see uh, what the baseline is for these. Okay, so... We're going up. I'm doing it in centigrade, but what I'll do at the end is I'll put a table up um, to show what the temperature is in Fahrenheit uh, for those of you in America or those who use Fahrenheit. Okay, we're going up rapidly. It's about 79, 80 at the moment. 
I would expect it to be slightly less than 100 because um, you start losing temperature the minute it's poured out the kettle. So here we are. 82.2 so it's already lost quite a bit of heat all right 82 and let's put it in the ceramic I'll just make a note, note of that 82 82 and the ceramic is currently Coming up to 80. Oh, okay, that one stops at 77, so it's a slightly lower temperature to start with. We've got about 5 uh, degrees differential. And what I'm going to do now is just leave them here. And I'm going to take another measurement in approximately, say, 2 3 minutes, and then we'll keep doing that up to about 10-15 minutes to see how they perform. Okay, we're coming up to five minutes, so let's take another reading. Another thing that's um, absolutely critical here, uh, or will affect the results, is the width of the diameter here. So the wider this is, um, the more heat it's going to lose. So there are different designs of these cups actually. You can get ones with smaller tops and wider bottoms. But hmm, that will affect the results. I'm just doing a basic experiment. Obviously if I was in a lab this would be far more controlled. Of course. Okay, we're slowing down now at about at 74. I don't know if you can see that. So let's put it in here. Let's make a note of 74. And bear in mind we'll have to take into account the 5 degree um, difference from the baseline. So, this one's slowing down now. And we have a reading of 69. So I'll make a note of that and we'll come back later and take some more readings. Okay, we're up to the 10 minute mark now, so let's take some more readings. Uh, we're doing the ceramic first. And if it goes, 46, 47, 50. I hope no one walks in on me, they'll just wonder what I'm doing. And go, oh, it's that sad girl from next door again, <laughs> doing daft experiments. <laughs> okay, we're getting up to about 62. It's levelled off about 62. There we go. So now we'll do the glass one. I'll make a next 62. Actually, neither of them are dropping as fast as I expected them to. I mean, they've been sat there 10 minutes. I thought they'd be a, quite a bit cooler than that. Okay, where are we at with this one? This one's levelled off at 67. So I'm going to put that down. Oh, it's, it's not winning actually, but I will take another reading in fif uh, 15 minutes. Okay, here we are at 15 minutes. Um, I'm going to take another reading. I'm going to take the last reading um, at 20 minutes because I think that would be a good end point. Um, because no one really leaves cups of tea for 20 minutes or cups of coffee for that matter. So where are we at? Okay, we're up to 59, 60, 61, 62, still not levelling off, 63, okay we've levelled off at 63, so let's take the ceramic reading. Okay, here we are for our final reading. So we'll start off with a ceramic. We're now 20 minutes in. And this will give us the final results, which is better, ceramic or glass. 
Mm, at the moment, there's not much in it. You see, this will be quite interesting because there's not much in it. They can't really sell the glass one as being thermally insulated and therefore keeping your tea warmer. So where are we at with this one? This one is levelling off. It's up to 54. It's slowing down now. Yeah, levelled off at 54 there. So now we'll do the glass. Leveled off at 59. So make a note of that. So from that, we can conclude that there is no difference. Um, when we started off at the beginning, um, the ceramic had a temperature of 77 and the glass had a temperature of 82. So there's a difference of five degrees from the starting point because it's not a lab, obviously, so it's not that controlled. But we ended up with the glass having a temperature of 59 and the ceramic having a temperature of 54. So there was still five degrees between them. So there is no difference between a ceramic mug and a glass mug. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to see what happens when you test it with cold drinks and see if it keeps it cooler. So I will start that experiment now. Okay, so now we're gonna start the cold experiment to see which one keeps um, drinks the coolest. Now what I've done is I've made sure that the, the residual heat from the last experiment has gone. So I've run these under cold water and left them so they get up to an ambient room temperature. So what I'm gonna do first is get an ice cube in each. And fill each with 300 millilitres of water. One. And the second one is here. Now what I'm not going to do is take a baseline reading just yet because um, the ice will need a chance to melt into the drink. So I'm going to leave it for a minute or two, and then I'm going to start the timer, and then we're going to start taking some readings. Okay, so I've left it a minute or two. I'm going to give it a quick stir, like that, to make sure that the coolness from the ice is distributed among the liquid. I'll start the timer, and we're going to take our baseline measurement. So we'll start with ceramic. I mean, technically, they should ex be exactly the same reading um, because they're both using the exact same tap water and they've both got exact same um, amount of fluid and they've both got exact same uh, size of ice cube. Okay, so that's 13 degrees there. And um, take a measurement for that. Make a note of that, 13. That's at naught mins. Okay, that's 30 as well. So what we'll do... I'm glad about that. That's how it should be. We should have the, both the same starting baseline. But I'll leave it a few minutes and we'll take another reading. Oh. Okay, we've reached about the four minute mark now. Time to take another reading. Let's see where we are with this. I'm expecting the results to be a lot less dramatic with this one. Quite simply because there's less difference between the cool water and the cool air than there is between hot water and cool air. So. There we go, we're at 12 for the glass. That's at four minutes. Okay, 
and ceramic. Thirteen. Make a note of that, and then we'll do another reading shortly. Okay, we're at nine minutes now. And it's quite interesting actually, because if you look at the first two sets of results, um, you can actually see the effect of the ice, because um, in the first four minutes, the drinks stayed the same, or in the case of glass, it got colder as the ice melted into the liquid. So that's quite interesting. And one moment, some water went off. So this one is plateauing. This is, looks about 10 degrees. 10.7. 10.7. And now for the ceramic. So if we look at this, I mean the glass so far, the temperature's dropped from 13 to 10. So that's the effect of the ice cube. So this experiment will have to run quite a bit longer to eliminate the ice cube effect. Oh, I didn't expect that. So it's turned into an ice cube and a double walled glass mug experiment. Oh, I like that. A double whammy. Okay, what have we got here? Oh, okay. This one is 13.3, 13, 13, 13 degrees. So we'll measure it again shortly. Okay, here we are at 15 minutes, so let's take the readings. This one is actually turning out to be more interesting than the hot one, because the hot one, they universally cooled at the same rate. The insulation didn't make any difference whatsoever. But this one, the glass one, seems to be um, cooling more effectively with the ice cube than the ceramic one which is showing very little cooling effect with the ice cube. So we'll have to conjecture about that later. All right then, this is plateaued out at 14, about 14. There we go. And let's do the glass. So that's warmed up about 0.7 of a degree centigrade. And so far, tentatively, the results, I don't want to preempt, but it looks like the glass mug is far more effective with cold liquids than it is with hot liquids. All right then. So we've got 12 here, and we'll give it another reading, say about uh, 20 minutes. Okay, we're about the 20 minute mark now, and we're gonna take another reading. We will start with this one here. I mean, I've been thinking about these results, and I think I know why there's a differential between the two, but I will discuss that one later with you. So the ceramic seems to be levelling out. We're at 14.8. 14.4. OK, we're levelled out at 14.4. And the class. We don't know uh, when the experiment's finished because the temperature will remain at constant and that will be room temperature so it won't get any warmer or any colder so that's when we know that we've reached the end of the experiment. Um, if we were doing the thermal one, the heat one, um, right to its conclusion we'd, we'd basically keep measuring until it reached room temperature. But we don't need to do that. For the purposes of the results, we just need to do it for, say, 20 minutes. OK, so where are we with this one? 12.2. And I'm going to leave that for probably another five, six minutes before I take another reading. OK, here we are at the 30-minute mark. Let's take some readings. I'm expecting it should start levelling off now as it reaches room temperature, um, especially because it's quite warm here today. It's, well, warm for the UK. 70 degrees, 17 degrees centigrade. 
positively balmy. That means everyone's walking around topless. The men, not the women. In shorts. But I suppose if you're in America or something, that would be ridiculously cold. Okay, so where are we now? Started to warm up. 13.3. Oh, I keep switching off. Little terror. Okay. It had a reading of 13.3. So let's put it in there. So we've got over the ice cube effect now. And it's starting to warm up to room temperature. I honestly thought that the hot experiment would be more interesting than the cold, but the cold one's more interesting. So this one's 14.5. Uh, I'm going to give it longer on this one. I'll take a reading uh, in about 10 minutes' time when we hit 40 minutes, see what happens. Okay, here we are at the 40 minute mark. Let's take some readings. <clears throat> okay. <coughs> Excuse me, I think I've breathed in some dust. Yeah, it's around 13.3 there. Make a note of that. Okay, and that's 15.2. So I'm going to leave it another 10 minutes and take a probably a final reading to see if it's levelling off. Okay, we're on 50 minutes and I'm going to make this one our last reading. So, let's do the glass. Okay, we're steadying at about 14 here. Oh, 13.8. Okay, that's 13.8 glass. And where are we here? Okay, 15.6. So these are our final readings. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them all together so you can have a look and then we'll look at the overall results um, when they're all collated. So, um, because I'm sad, I have collated the results in a spreadsheet here. And when you look at the results, the majority of it can be explained by heat transfer. So we look here, um, when the water was initially poured in, after 1 minute and 30 seconds, ceramic started off with a baseline of 77 degrees centigrade and the glass at 82 degrees centigrade. Now what you can conclude from this is that the ceramic absorbs more of the heat into its walls initially. So you pour the hot water in and the ceramics will draw the heat out from the water very quickly. Um, that does not happen very much with the glass because after a minute and 30 seconds um, that started off at 82 degrees centigrade which is our baseline. But once the ceramic had absorbed the heat at the beginning they then stayed constant all the way through the experiment, a constant 5 degrees between them. So apart from the initial heat transfer at the beginning uh, with the ceramics they performed equally well throughout the test with just 5 degrees centigrade between them. So, in terms of that, 
the glass wins because the initial heat transfer is lower for the glass than it is for the ceramics. Now let's have a look at the cold results. Okay, let's have a look. Right then, let's scroll up here. This one was actually more interesting and that can also be explained by heat transfer. So the ceramic, um, as you can see, basically started off at 13 degrees centigrade, 13 degrees centigrade and stayed pretty constant right up to 20 minutes. And even when we're going up to uh, 30 minutes and 40 minutes, it's still, you know, not that much variation. It was only when we got to 50 minutes that it started leaping up to kind of room temperature. Whereas the glass was f way more effective at insulating cold liquid. I mean, you can clearly see with the glass the effect of the ice cube. Uh, it went from 13 to 12 to 10 before it started rising slightly again at 15 minutes. And even then, um, right from 15 minutes to 50 minutes, there was only one degree difference in temperature from 12 to 13. So it's incredibly more effective with cold liquids than the ceramic is. Now, I think this is the exact opposite of what happened with the hot experiment, in that essentially the ceramic absorbed the coolness of the liquid. So the heat transfer from the mug to the liquid uh, basically didn't let the liquid cool down. So the ice cubes effect were negated and it kept absorbing that coolness. So from that we can conclude, as I said, ceramic heat transfer from the mug to the liquid negates the cooling effect of the ice cube. So basically, if you're going to drink lemonade out of a mug, there's no point putting an ice cube in. Um, because the mug is just going to absorb all the coolness and it's not going to stay cool. Uh, but the glass is far less susceptible to heat transfer. So therefore, the ice cube is more effective. We could see the actual ice cube cooling the liquids right at the beginning. And it took a, a quite a long while before that temperature increased. So... What we can say is that glass remains significantly cooler throughout the whole 50 minutes and glass wins. So, if you are thinking about getting a glass mug, right, the thermal transfer for hot liquids, the initial thermal transfer is a lot better. So, you won't have an initial drop when you first pour your coffee. And it will then, uh, the heat will decline at a steady rate, the same as ceramic but it still performs better overall. But in terms of coolness testing, the glass whips ass of ceramic. So, <laughs> I hope you found this useful and interesting. Um, I'm gonna pop off and do something less geeky. If you find uh, this helpful or interesting, please hit subscribe and like. Thank you for your time.